Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, retina specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. This presentation is the introduction, which I will discuss the difference between OCT scans and feature of normal OCT. Optical coherence tomography OCT is one or even the most important ancillary test used to diagnose and follow up patients with macular diseases. As we are living in the year 2020, it is imperative to do OCT before treating macular diseases even when we are sure about the diagnosis and the clinical examination as OCT may reveal biomarkers that may have prognostic factors along with pathologies subtle to clinical examination which may impact our treatment decisions and OCT is a valuable tool to assess the qualitative and quantitative features of macular pathology to compare it with OCT cross-sections post-treatment or observation, which will help us to evaluate treatment efficacy and to take decision for future treatments and follow-up planning. There are main two types of OCT scans qualitative which is tomography scans and quantitative which is topography scans the tomography scans vary depending on the OCT machine software capabilities still the most popular scan are line scan or B scan radial scan macular multi or mesh and raster scan the topography scans are macular map, macular 3D, NFAS, OCT, and OCT Ancho, which unfortunately won't be discussed in this course and maybe in other future courses. Line scan shows one cross section OCT scan. This line can be moved and changed in size and axis depends on the examiner desire. And it is helpful to do cross sectional OCT to study a specific retinal lesion. Some software allowed to, to cross line to, to study the desired retinal lesion in vertical and horizontal plane. In OCT report for line scan, there would be an infrared image or SLO image showing a line and an arrow showing OCT cross section location and direction which the yellow spots projects the yellow line in the OCT cross section. This is helpful as location indicator when studying the OCT cross section. While the graph shows changes in retinal thickening from ILM to RPE prox membrane or it can be changed to study the changes in retinal thickness uh, across retinal layers depend on software capabilities. The radial scan is one of the most popular scans which in principle is multiple line scans which the center of each scan is always at the center of the fovea by default. The number and size of the scans along with the location can be changed depending on the software capabilities. Radial scan is handy to study retinal pathology between the center of the fovea extending to the temporal arcades in the posterior pole. For example, radial scan is an excellent scanning method to evaluate non-central clinically significant diabetic macular edema. However, the radial scan can easily skip retinal pathologies between the radial scan lines. Therefore, it is not recommended to rely on the radial scan alone. The radial scan report may show all radial line scans taken by the OCT machine. An examiner can choose the appropriate scan that reveals the main pathology. Therefore, the retinal physician must decide what image should be chosen. Some OCT machines produce radial thickness map from ILM to RPE uh, Brooks membrane uh, complex. This map can be helpful to follow up patients with macular edema. The graphs serve the same function as mentioned earlier. Raster scan is a multiple line scans parallel to each other in horizontal plane or vertical plane. The number, space, and lengths of the line scan can be adjusted depending on software capabilities. However, raster scan is one of the most essential OCT scans to study macular pathology in different levels. In contrast, the macular multi-scan provides both horizontal and vertical line scans, which are very useful to study macular changes without skipping any pathology in square form from crossed 
horizontal and vertical lines both raster and macular multi is great for a follow-up patient with macular diseases OCT report shows line scans taken by the OCT machine and some OCT machines produce thickness map and graph serves the same function as mentioned earlier in clinical practice both radial and raster scan are important to obtain in order to study macular diseases appropriately and not to miss any pathology. Quantitative scans such as macular map topography, one of the most popular scans, but sometimes it, mis it is misleading due to it is software and patient data dependent. For example, if Arab patient examined and machine don't have Arab race, the software map analysis won't be accurate the same uh, when the age and sex are incorrectly added macular topography is useful for demonstrational purposes when explaining the patient uh, about the disease and show treatment efficacy as topography shows a colorful map which is color coded depends on the thickness changes so when uh, the macular thickness is between 200 and 300 the color would be blue and around 300 it would be green between 300 and 400 microns it would be yellow however red when the thickness is between 400 and 500 microns while white color usually for thickness above 500 microns still the location of the edema is not always accurately presented on the topographical map and treating uh, physicians should rely on tomography to decide to consider the pathology is central or non-central the ETDRS sector uh, 9 contains thickness value that projects the location of clinically significant macular edema as identified by the ETDRS and can be color coded based on deviation from normative database. However, the coloring may not be presented accurately due to reasons mentioned above while the numbers presented are accurate as it takes the mean thickness in the scanned area and useful for, uh, to follow up patients. Therefore, uh, when OCT machine produce macular topography, it scans the, uh, the retinal volume depending on the software capabilities, which it may capture 12 by 9 mm and produce volumetric OCT, which is very useful to study uh, the extent and distribution of macular pathologies, along with the status of vitreous uh, and its adhesions or tractions to retinal surface. And this can be very handy when planning uh, a prosplanar vitrectomy. Obtaining both the volumetric uh, OCT and topographical map software can render 3D cube of the macula, which can be segmented into different planes, along with horizontal or vertical to study retinal layers in depth, along with 3D rendering of the vitreous, which is very helpful to see the vitro macular tractions when planning to do prosplanar vitrectomy. OCT infas is a C scan formed by multiple B scans, which creates fundus images in a different planes of the depth, such as ILM vitreous, inner nuclear tissues, RPE, and chorate, which is very useful to delineate macular pathologies in different levels. For example, in vitro macular traction and epiretinal membrane is visible showing the extent and direction of the traction. The same applies uh, for inter uh, intraretinal cysts, cysts, which shows distribution of, uh, and size of intraretinal cysts in the inner nuclear layer. Some OCT machines unlock adjustable segmentation to study the, the desired retinal layer in C-section. In o uh, the OCTA applies the same segmentation but showing only vessels instead of tissue. Learning the normal OCT finding is important to distinguish the pathology. OCT best studies uh, in grayscale or black and white color. Normal OCT scan may show some uh, of posterior vitreous anatomies which a uh, hypo-reflective pocket presents vitreous cinerases while the hyper-reflective tape close to the retina uh, in the post is the posterior uh, cortical hyaloid and the hypo-reflective space underneath it is the retrohyaloid space. When examining the macula on OCT, the retinal tissues exhibit the following characteristics. 
the retinal layer which contains nerve nuclei it appears hyporeflective while the retinal layer that includes nerve connections of axons and dendrites will appear as hyperreflective nevertheless in spectral domain uh, OCT, there is no visible diminution between Brooks membrane and RPE layer. Spectral domain OCT shows a poorly boundaries between the inner plexiform layer and ganglion cell layer. That's why, along with the retinal, retinal fiber uh, layer, are analyzed as ganglion cell complex in topographical scanning of the optic disc. The retinal fiber layer appears as hyperreflective layer that appears more thicker in the nasal side than the temporal side of the macular scan, which can help to identify the nasal and temporal side of the macula. Hence, it will help to determine uh, the right from the left eye. This layer is essential for circle and topographical optic scans when evaluating glaucoma. The underlying hyperreflective layer is the ganglion cell layer. Underneath it, uh, a more hyperreflective layer that represents the inner plexiform layer. And underneath it, there is a hyperreflective layer in the inner nuclear layer. Then there is a outer plexiform layer shown as a hyperreflective layer. The retinal nerve fiber layer, ganglion cell layer, inner plexiform layer, inner nuclear layer, and the outer plexiform layer are absent in the foveal center, where only outer nuclear layer is presented uh, and has more exceptional thickness, while outside the center uh, of the fovea it becomes uh, thinner. There, uh, the outer nuclear layer is hypo-reflective, where at the bottom of it uh, there would be a hyper reflective thin line which is external limiting membrane underneath the external limiting membrane a hyperreflective uh, layer presents uh, an inner segment of photoreceptors called mild zone below it a hyperreflective line which presents junctions between the inner and outer segments of photoreceptors which at the center of the fovea it called ellipsoid zone which is one of the very important layer any disruption of it, it will cause a visual loss. At the fovea center, only there would be a hyperreflective pocket that contains outer segments of photoreceptors. Between the ellipsoid zone and RPE layer, there is interdigitation zone, which present the tips of photoreceptors. This layer appears as a hyperreflective line, but not always visible in spectral domain OCT. RPE layer appears as hyperreflective line under the interdigitation or ellipsoid zone, which in normal cases, Brooks membrane is not visible. Choroid best imaged using in his depth imaging uh, mode or swept source OCT. As OCT shows pr uh, primarily Sattler and Haller layer, sometimes suprachoroidal space and sclera can be visible, especially when using swept source OCT. The black and white negative OCT images may be applied clinically to study hyperreflective tissues, which marked in shades of black color, to study vitreous changes and its relation to the inner retinal tissue, and can be great tool to evaluate RPE and outer retinal layers changes. The clinical application of pseudocolor OCT is to identify the difference in reflectivity between retinal layer in a color-coded manner. So, the red-white indicates the high reflective tissue, where the black and blue indicates low reflectivity, where green indicates the intermediate reflectivity. When examining OCT cross-section, the vitreous changes along with its relation to the inner retinal tissue should be evaluated, uh, assessing the re uh, of retinal contour and integrity of retinal tissue and ellipsoid zone along with integrity of uh, RPE and underlying choroid should be evaluated. It is essential to assess changes in retinal thickening and changes in retinal tissue reflectivity. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, listening. I hope this presentation helps you in your clinical practice. Please stay tuned to the next presentation where I will talk about the uh, pathological changes in OCC.